I think a lot of people have been quick to point out that um, vaccine inadherence, vaccine hesitancy, anti-vaccination, obviously a different topic, but vaccine hesitancy is sort of going to influence our rate of immunity uh, due to any vaccine that's available. But there's a small part of me that's optimist to the idea that maybe it's the other way around. Maybe this is what actually breaks vaccine hesitancy towards people understanding and embracing it better. There's such a great investment right now in understanding how this virus works and what can be done to combat it. And people are acutely paying attention to things like this AstraZeneca news, which any other situation would fly over the radar of every lay person in the country, right? I think this might be the actual opportunity for um, experts, including yourself, to kind of rally around the point of, you know, the coronavirus isn't the only thing we have to be concerned about. It isn't the only thing that we can, uh, you know, prevent further infection and risk and, and death uh, from. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I just, I just kind of see it uh, potentially going that way if we're able to find the right candidate and introduce that first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I certainly hope so. And, you know, as I've told my kids and my family members and my students that I certainly will will um, lead by example here and demonstrate my willingness to get the vaccine as soon as it's available, um, knowing that, you know, I work in the field of infectious diseases and microbiology. So I think, um, you know, those of us who trust the system and those of us who see the science behind it and know the, the oversight that's required and the level of of scrutiny that all of these um, vaccines have to go through and then demonstrate that, yeah, there's a safety um, process that's, that's very carefully reviewed and analyzed by super smart people and, and very much detail oriented um, and that we are willing to go ahead and get the vaccine. And I hope that's the outcome. I really yeah. do. Uh, the other problem that we, we have to be aware of is um, we may also have some folks who are, who are maybe super, eager to get it. And we, we may have to temper that a little bit by saying, okay, we're going to stratify this by risk. So, no. you know, the elderly, those with comorbid conditions, those in residential living facilities, um, the healthcare workers, as you mentioned, will all be priority. Um, and that's hard for sometimes people to hear, right? Because they may be very eager to get it. Um, I don't know if you remember, but probably 11 years ago or so, we had a real shortage on the flu vaccine. And there was a priority um, list that was that was developed to make sure that they got, you know, to the areas where patients who are most vulnerable would be getting it first. And that that took some some criticism by some folks. So yeah. um, hopefully we'll have rapid production, um, rapid safe production of the vaccine. It'll get to the areas, the hot spots first, and it'll get to those who are most vulnerable and the healthcare yeah. workers themselves. And then we can we can roll out the real mass um, vaccines by the millions. Yeah. I mean, I think it certainly will be a difficult discussion, especially for people maybe in my age group uh, that have been adhering to you know, preventive measures and social distancing is uh, sort of hold on a little bit more, uh, you know, and that's that's something that's going to be a reality in 2021. But, you know, it is for a greater good. Right. So it, is. it keeps it buying is. into that public health message of you're wearing a mask for others, not yourself. You're keeping right. safe from others for yourself and others. So, right. um, yeah, 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 it's it's going to be an interest. It's going to be an interesting year interesting after time. a very yeah. interesting one, uh, for lack of a better term, I guess this year. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm Dr. happy to hear you say that because you know there are some people who just can't get the vaccine, whether they have had adverse reactions to vaccines in the past or they're they have a demonstrated an allergy to one of the components and ingredients in the vaccine. So we have to be mindful of those folks too, right? So the people yeah. who may otherwise be willing to get the vaccine but can't. Yeah. And so I feel a personal obligation to try to protect them as well, um, which, yeah. which means then promoting the vaccination program for those of us who are um, able to safely get the vaccine. Yeah. 